It is 7.05 and we will reconvene an open session, this regular meeting of the Waco ISD Board of Trustees. We have been in closed session under section 551.074 of the Texas Government Code and no action was taken. We have got a packed house tonight. Welcome. Uh, we tell you every month that we cannot do uh, this work for the young people in this community without the support of the citizens of Waco and we appreciate your being here tonight and we continue, appreciate your continued support and your interest in the Waco Public Schools. As I remind you every month, I will remind you that the board's purpose is to set goals, listen to reports of the superintendent, approve budgets, contracts, and personnel appointments, and to make policy for the district. We are not here to make management decisions or to solve problems of individuals, as management is the sole responsibility of the superintendent and his staff. Also want to welcome anybody watching at home on Channel 17 instead of watching the Baylor game. Uh, also, uh, because we have a, a large crowd, if you've got a cell phone or other electronic device, if you would either turn it off or silence it, we'd appreciate it. Uh, and again, thank you uh, for being here tonight. Uh, and with that, uh, we will move on to item five and ask that you join us as we pause for a moment of silence for prayer, contemplation, reflection, or meditation. Thank you. We'll move on to item six, Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. DeBeer. Thank you, Mr. President. Tonight, we're pleased to have two students from J.H. Hines Elementary School to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please welcome Jemiah Johnson and Azrael Nunez Bedoya. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, students. Members of the board, we've got, we're going to begin special recognition with a special ceremony. If everybody will stay up here for a moment. Mr. Dr. Thank you, Mr. President. And thank you, Mr. DeBeer. As superintendent of schools, the safety and security of our students and staff is one of our top priorities. Waco ISD is fortunate to have a team of men and women who are dedicated to this endeavor each and every day, all day, every day. The Waco ISD Police Department serves our district with honor, dignity, and respect. Over the past nine months, Lieutenant David Williams, the second in command, has been leading the department as interim chief of police. Lieutenant Williams, at this time, would you and your lovely wife, Tracy, and your children please make your way to the front. Mr. President, honorable members of the board, it is my incredible honor tonight to announce David Williams as the second new chief of police for the Waco Independent Pol School District Police Department. <laughs> As we've gone through the hiring process over the past few months, one thing that has stood out and is important to me is that Chief Williams already knows our schools, knows our campus leaders, knows our staff, knows our campuses, and is very active. Him and his family are very active in this community. Uh, he's proven he's up to the task before him. And we're excited about the seamless transition um, for the officers in our department and for our principals, teachers, and students. 
Prior to and while serving as interim, he has been instrumental in building relationships across the district and within the department and has worked tirelessly to ensure the safety of our students and staff. He also has participated in unprecedented and innovative training at Sam Houston State, is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, he's also, his family is active at the Mighty Wind Christian Church under the direction of Pastor Carbajal. I'm particularly proud that being a positive law enforcement role model for our kids is a priority for Chief Williams. Uh, I've seen him donating him t his time, him and his wife, at Thanksgiving, on holidays. He barbecues a mean rib, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and at this time, I would like to introduce our Assistant Superintendent of Operations and Supervisor of our Police Department to administer the oath of office to Chief Williams. Mr. Israel Carrera, our Assistant Superintendent of Operations. Mr. Cordell. Lieutenant Williams, if you will please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, David Williams II. I, David Williams II. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully execute the duties. That I will faithfully execute the duties. Of the Office of Chief of Police. Of the Office of Chief of Police. With the Waco Independent School District of the State of Texas. With the Waco Independent School District of the State of Texas. And I will do the best of my ability and without. Go ahead. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> and I will do, and I will, and will to the best of my ability. And will to the best of my ability. Without partiality or prejudice. Without partiality or prejudice. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. And laws of the United States of this state and laws of the United States and this state. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you. Y'all look at the camera and smile. Thank you. It is indeed our honor and privilege to recognize Chief Williams on this special night. Um, before we allow Chief Williams to make a few remarks, we did want to recognize several other uh, police chiefs. I know the chief of police from Robinson is here. And recognize him for being here. I noticed that there are several other officers here. We want to thank you for your service and for joining us tonight in uh, this special occasion in our school district. Obviously, the officers that work under Chief Williams' command, uh, they are the finest officers that our state has to offer. Amen. And I'm so proud to have them as part of our school district. And we thank you for the work that you do each day. Um, having said that, um, I believe there's a uh, you got something else to say? Uh, let me turn it back over to Mr. Carrera so he can say something else. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Members of the Board of Trustees, ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege and honor oh. to introduce to you all this okay. evening the new Waco ISD Chief of Police, Chief David Williams II. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. yeah, I started. Yes. So yeah, let's get a shot of that. There you go. Do not stab. Mama, do not stab. You get the boys transferred over here. You start to rob me. It's gonna fall off. Don't do it. Just turn it on. Turn. Can't say it and think about it. Hey, I just snapped some a little bit. <laughs> hey, this is terrible. That's what I'm saying. No rush. No rush. No rush. Come on, man. Push it in there. Push it in there. Okay, push it in there. 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 Push it in
Okay. I got it. I'm glad you're pretty. <laughs> she didn't even go to school with A&M. <laughs> I was telling uh, Miss McCutcheon earlier today, I could have been a Baptist preacher, but I'm going to spare y'all. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, I just want to thank God for this opportunity. Um, this is something that, you know, in my life plan has been a goal for me. And um, it's just an awesome thing to have the support of everyone that's in here. These guys, it, it's not about me. It's about these guys right here who support me. And these are the guys that do all the work. You know, I'm, I'm just there to help them out and to serve them. But I just want to say thank you to them because no one ever recognizes those guys. And I just want to say thank you guys for your support. Thank you to my wife for putting up with me. And I, <laughs> it's been a rough <laughs> couple of months. And I just thank you, my family, everybody. Just I love you all. Thank you so much. Dr. Nelson, members of the board, if you'd please join me in front of the dais, we'll continue tonight's special recognitions. We continue the special recognition portion of our meeting this evening with an introduction of our pledge leaders who you met earlier. They both attend J. H. Hines Elementary School. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce you to Jemiah Johnson, who is a fifth grader at J. H. Hines Elementary School and says that math is her favorite subject. In her spare time, she enjoys playing basketball, games, and reading books. When she grows up, Jemiah wants to become a professional basketball player. Jemiah's teacher says that she is a true leader in the classroom and is honest and respectful. Jemiah comes to class every day and tries to better herself through the power of knowledge. Any teacher would be lucky to have her in their classroom. Jemiah is a very talented and bright young lady. Jemiah's mother, Sharita, is here tonight. Would you please stand so that we can recognize you and thank you as well for sharing your daughter with us this evening. Azrael Nunez Bedoya is also a fifth grader at J.H. Hines and says that his favorite subject in school is science. Azrael likes to play outside, listen to music, climb trees, and watch television. When he grows up, Azrael wants to be a neurosurgeon. <laughs> Azrael's teacher says he is a delightful young gentleman with a sense of humor far beyond his years. He holds himself to a high standard of academic excellence and is an enthusiastic learner who tackles new challenges seriously and confidently. His teacher adds, it has been a privilege to engage with Azrael. Azrael is joined this evening by his mother, Nicole Nunez. Would you please stand as well so that we can recognize you and thank you for raising such a wonderful son. We also want to say thank you to our Adopt-A-School partner, Barnes & Noble, for donating the books that our pledge leaders are receiving tonight. 
last month, I was pleased to introduce you to a very talented artist from Cesar Chavez Middle School whose artwork was selected as a winner of Peter Piper Pizza's 2018-2019 calendar contest. And tonight, I'm excited to introduce you to another young budding artist here in Waco ISD whose uh, talented artwork also earned her a spot in the calendar publication. Evelyn Alvarado, now a kindergartner at Alta Vista Elementary School, submitted an entry into the calendar contest while in pre-kindergarten. The, the pizza chain holds an annual contest across our region and just 18 entries are selected each year to be printed in its calendars. We're thrilled that Evelyn's entry, which is up on the scene now, was selected to represent December 2019 in their calendar. <laughs> this evening, Evelyn is also presenting Dr. Nelson with an autographed copy of the calendar. <laughs> Both Evelyn's pre-kindergarten and her kindergarten teachers have joined her here this evening, and we'd like to recognize them for their outstanding instruction. Please welcome Alta Vista kindergarten teacher Jessica Lopez and pre-kindergarten teacher Griselda Picasso, who was just recently named Alta Vista's Outstanding Teacher of the Year. We also have Evelyn's family with us this evening. I'd like to ask them to stand so that we can congratulate them as well. Thank you for joining us and, and congratulations, again, congratulations again to this very talented artist. Each year in October, the ExtraCo Events Center becomes a major attraction for much of the city with the heart of Texas Fair and Rodeo bringing concerts, rodeo competitions, rides, and of course, fair food to the ar arena. But in addition to all that, they also bring the annual academic rodeo to the community, giving local students the opportunity to enter in various contests and competitions to showcase their skills and talents. The academic rodeo includes a math bee, a public service announcement contest, art and photography competitions, and an event that particularly interested our next young student, a spelling bee. Jermaine Carpenter is a second grader at Lake Air Montessori Magnet School, and he decided to enter the spelling bee. Jermaine's mother, Shamika Carpenter, a PE teacher at Dean Highland Elementary, printed off the words, and she and Jermaine practiced every night. That practice paid off, earning Jermaine second place and leading to his selection as the reserve champion of the 2018 Heart of Texas Fair and Rodeo's Academic Rodeo and Spelling Bee. Jermaine asked us to thank his principal, Ms. Tankersley, and his teacher, Mr. Cross, who did an amazing job encouraging him and wishing him well. And we'd also like to recognize Jermaine's family who's here tonight. Would you please stand so we can congratulate you as well? Last month, we recognized students who earned a perfect score on their third grade reading or math star assessments. And this month, we get to continue the celebration of perfection by introducing you to a group of students who received perfect scores on their fourth and fifth grade star assessments. Uh, tonight, we're excited to recognize nine students who received a perfect score on a 2018 fourth or fifth grade star assessment, beginning with our math scholars. First, I'd like to introduce you to Daniela Mercado, Mercado from Provident Heights Elementary. <laughs> Clarissa Chavez from Bells Hill and Joel Vizcaya from Kendrick Elementary were unable to join us tonight, but also received perfect scores on the fourth grade math test. From Cedar Ridge, Joseph Castillo received a perfect score on his fourth grade star reading test. Uh, 
And from Dean Highland Elementary, Holly Marie Kennedy received a score of eight on the composition portion of the star writing test. That, that's the highest possible score and leads to a designation of accomplished. Up next, with perfect scores on their fifth grade star math test last year, I'd like to introduce first from Lake Air Montessori, Caden Fillmore. And Abigail Ochoa from Hillcrest was unable to be with us tonight, but she currently attends Tennyson Middle School. Middle School. With a perfect score on their fifth grade reading tests, we'd like to introduce you to Yesenia Antonio from Bells Hill Elementary. John Palomino from Hillcrest PDS. And Amaya Humphrey attends Parkdale but was unable to join us tonight. Moving on to our fifth graders who received perfect scores on their star science tests, please welcome Daisy Barco from Kendrick Elementary. <laughs> Rebecca Higgins from Crestview Elementary. And Humberto Vasquez from Providence Heights Elementary. These last two groups of students all currently attend Tennyson Middle School. Uh, I'd just like to ask any of the parents or family members with the students with perfect scores that we recognize tonight to please stand, as well as our, our principals and our teachers who help them achieve that success as well. We want to thank all of you for contributing to this accomplishment. met Maddie Lacey last month, but we're excited to have her back again to celebrate yet another incredible national accomplishment. The National Merit Scholarship Program began in, began in 1955 as a way to honor individual students who show exceptional academic ability and potential for success in rigorous college studies. High school students enter the program by taking the preliminary SAT in October of their junior year. Each year, more than 1.6 million juniors take the test. And out of that, it's called to a very select group of which Maddie Lacey is one of them who receives letters of commendation for their high scores on the PSAT National Merit Scholar Qualifying Test as part of the 2019 National Merit Scholarship Program. Although commended students like Lacey don't continue in the competition for National Merit Scholarships, many of these students become candidates for special scholarships sponsored by corporations and businesses. Uh, Maddie is the daughter of Ben and Noel Lacey. If you're here tonight, would you please stand so we can congratulate you as well. Thank you for sharing your daughter and her successes with us, and, and congratulations again to Waco ISD and Waco High School's Advanced Academics Program for supporting the National Merit Scholarship Program as well. Uh, we are overflowing with artistic talent tonight. You've met one of our youngest artists, and now I'm excited to introduce you to some of our older art students. Uh, this year, the Central Texas Hispanic Chamber of Commerce hosted their Young Artist Showcase. And tonight, we get to recognize three high school students whose artwork placed in the showcase. First, I'd like to introduce Travis Beauchamp, whose entry titled Freedom and Justice for All placed second and can be seen on the screens throughout the room. Next, please join me in welcoming Magnolia Oliphant, whose entry titled Agrarian Agriculture received first place in the showcase. <laughs> and 
And while Krista Patterson from University High School was unable to join us this evening, we'd also like to celebrate her third place entry, Our Southern Culture. Uh, if there are parents or family members of our art students here tonight, would you stand so we can celebrate you as well? We're pleased to have their teachers with us tonight. I'd like to introduce to you first Joel Calissimo from Waco High School. And Renee Ebeling from University High School. Thank you so much for encouraging your students to develop their talents and explore their passions. As I mentioned earlier, the Heart of Texas Fair and Rodeo has a broad academic showcase that highlights a variety of skills for the st and talents of local students. We've already met a spelling bee champion, and next we get to recognize three students who were honored for their art and photography talents. Uh, as I introduce each student, their work will be displayed on the screen. First up, I'd like to welcome back Travis Beauchamp, again, a senior at Waco High School. His work, titled Drowning in Time, won fifth place in the Academic Rodeo Senior Art Competition. <laughs> Next, please welcome Waco High School senior Hunter Lim, whose entry titled Dragonfly won fifth place in the Senior Photography Contest. And next, it's my pleasure to introduce Brianna Mann, a junior from Waco High School, whose entry entitled Lily won fourth place in the senior photography competition. <laughs> if there are any family members of these students, would you please stand so that we can recognize you as well tonight? want to thank again the teachers who made this possible. First, please welcome again Joel Calissimo from Waco High School, our art teacher. And Waco High School's photography teacher, Jose Yao. I'm excited to conclude the special recognitions tonight by highlighting the outstanding work and support of one of our campuses for the local organization, McLennan County Pack of Hope. Pack of Hope was founded in 2011 by Jane Bounds and Waco ISD's Director of Child Nutrition Services, Cliff Reese. The organization exists to erase child hunger in McLennan County, and it works towards that mission by supplying participating school districts and their eligible students with backpacks filled with nutritious food to prevent hunger from Friday through Sunday while students are not in school. In its first year, Pack of Hope served 200 students. Now in its eighth year, they currently serve 18 school districts and ended last school year serving more than 1,000 children in our community. This year, one of our elementary schools saw the need that Pack of Hope is meeting and stepped up in a big way. Cedar Ridge Elementary School, led by Principal Helen Smith, decided to collect both monetary donations and food from Pack of Hope's wish list. The campus split up into teams for a little friendly competition. And when looking at the dollar amounts and the pounds of food collected, Pack of Hope says that just $195 or 165 pounds of food from the wish list will provide one child a pack of food for an entire year. Well, at Cedar Ridge Elementary School, they stepped up and collected 3,883 pounds of food and $3,210 in monetary donations for Pack of Hope. And those monetary donations were fueled in part by a donation of $500 from St. Albans Episcopal Church. Combined, all of this will feed an additional 40 students at Cedar Ridge this year. Um, this evening, I'm pleased to have with us representing Pack of Hope and Cedar Ridge Elementary School, first co-founder of Pack of Hope, Jane Bounds. Thank you. 
And from Cedar Ridge Elementary School, assistant principals Aaron Lange and Lena Phillip. <laughs> and our principal, Helen Smith. I just want to thank Cedar Ridge one more time for stepping up to make a difference for our kids. Because of their work, 40 kids have meals that wouldn't have otherwise. Waco ISD is proud and honored to have such dedicated and compassionate staff. They really do personify the phrase all day, every day when it comes to caring for our students. Um, and with that special recognition, we conclude the special recognitions portion of this evening's meeting. All right, if everyone will settle back into their seats, we'll continue with the meeting. I, I do want to make one observation. I think during special recognition, I get to be a part of the best part, which is recognizing the students. But I feel like being at this end, I miss half the show of our six foot five superintendent posing for pictures with itty bitty kindergartners. Got my, got and, my uh, stretches in. I, uh, yeah. Well, we need to flip flop it then. We need to get to watch that more closely. Uh, it's my understanding that nobody signed up for the audience for guests at item eight. We'll move on to item nine, the consent agenda. Uh, I have been asked to pull items E and G uh, for some questions uh, from the board. I've also I've been asked by the administration to pull item N uh, to come up at a subsequent meeting. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Is there anything else anyone wants pulled from the consent agenda? All right, then I will entertain a motion to adopt the consent agenda with the exception of items E, G, and N. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Sykes. Is there a second? Sir. Thank you, Ms. Manning. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, the consent agenda is adopted with those exceptions. We'll go down to item 9E, which is the discussion and possible action to approve the bid renewal for the health insurance consulting services. Uh, Mr. Dupuy, you had some questions? Um, yeah, I've, uh, just briefly, I guess I'd like to see included in the agenda the backup for and, and another request for propo proposals now are a year and a half old or so, but I assume that's what we're basing our decision off of today. Yes, sir. It's a renewal of that bid that was previously awarded last year. Gotcha. We never have published in our agenda the details of what we based our decision on. I'd, I'd like for us to be more transparent in that. 
Okay. Um, I'd, I'd asked for that last time, and I think that, I mean, it was a year and a half ago, we were brought, well, individual board members were brought a handout, but I've, I'd, I'd like for the world to see what we're doing there. I, 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 and we yes, need I understand. Able, okay, we need to be able to defend it, and then we haven't got anything to hide there, so I'd, I'd sure. like to see that. Okay. That, so the scoring by the committee and, and the other backup. Well, and yeah, and also where we are, I mean, I, it, it's something I'm voting on as if I've got a decision to make here. And I can't really see what I'm deciding to do other than to renew a contract, the details of which I don't have in front of me. Okay. Yes, uh, Dr. Nelson. And so uh, if I understand Trustee Dupuy correctly, uh, for the record, you'd like for us to table this item in no, depth? No, 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 no. Uh, oh, you want to see it tonight? No, I, no, I don't think that's possible. Okay, so you want to take action on it tonight Next and then provide. I see okay. this on an agenda. Oh, okay, that okay. I'm expected to vote on. Okay. I want to see the details of yeah, that makes how, how we got to where we are. Yes, sir. Very I, reasonable. My memory's not that good. Um, I'm, I have some vague recollection of it, and I know about you know where I think. And, I, and I, if, I, if I felt like I had some quarrel with it, yeah, I'd ask to table this, and we'd okay. get back. But, and I, again, I might, but I don't think so. It's the same I, rate as last year that the board approved We never year. have published that, and I want to see it. Well, Not a problem. We'll do that for next year. In the agenda. Next year is the third we, year. We, we, we owe the taxpayers that. Yes, sir. Yes. All right. Enough said on that. Uh, well, let's do let's, or maybe I'll not enough said. Well, no, I'll entertain a motion. Sure. Does anybody else have any questions or comments on item 9E? I did. I, yeah, I, Ms. Tika. Do we have to vote on it tonight? I would like to see that <coughs> as well. Is there a reason we can't wait? We can take it um, um, indefinitely. It doesn't have to be uh, indefinite. Well, that's indefinitely to me. When does the con <laughs> Okay, the contract period begins or so, yes, we'll when? Be yeah. December 31st? Yeah, we have time. I'd like we to, see, I'd okay. like to uh, take, take a look at that. All right. Uh, so if I have a request by two I'm board sorry. members to uh, postpone it, everybody okay with that? Anybody want to make a motion tonight? All right. Then we'll uh, take up item 9E next month, and we'll move on to uh, item 9G. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Um, Dupuy? Again, and Sherry, you and I have had some discussions on this. Our our bidding process here and I've I keep thinking I'm going to come around to understanding it and I'm continuing to fail to do that but I I've here's and I want some of the other board members I guess to hear what some of my issues are with it we're approving a list of vendors <clears throat> that have issued catalog bids that involves no pricing and no commitments on their part to provide any particular services. Oh. And I'm, we do a lot of purchasing that way. And I, I don't want to be too hard on you here. And I don't want this is going to sound harsh. It seems like a pointless exercise. And perhaps, the, I mean, I've, I've read the TEA code that governs how we're supposed, and I'm sure there's a body of writing somewhere else that I've, I'm not privy to or haven't seen that it would explain why we're doing things the way we are. But I guess here's what I would have you tell me tonight, I think, is what purpose does creating this list serve? What malady or bad actor or event does that protect us from? Because it seems to be, I mean, there's, I don't know how many's on the list tonight, uh, 40, 50. <coughs> and I like giving our administration the, the opp opportunity to go to a number of different sources possibly and find the best deal for their, you know, budgetary dollars, and I, I, I think they're the best ones to make a call on that. However, I can't, I can't see how our system does anything but exclude people that didn't respond to a bid that didn't have any pricing on it anyway. This, well, it does have is, pricing, sir. It, it does. Well, we're asking for a discount off of their catalog or their retail price list. 
Okay, and we're asking them to hold that price firm for the term of the bid. Do we get a copy of the price list? Does anybody submit? I mean, I... No, because price lists change every month. We can't get a new price list from a vendor every month. Right. So off of their current price list, their published current price list. And so this is a method that is allowed by the Texas Education Agencies that school districts in Texas use. And the reason school districts use this is that because we cannot reasonably predict every single item that the school district will need to procure during the school year as nuts and bolts and repair parts for air conditioning. Well, I don't think anybody would expect you to. So this is the legal method for us to procure items because the state law requires that any purchase with an aggregate total price of $50,000 a year be competitively bid. This meets that legal requirement. When a vendor submits this bid, not only are they giving us a discount off their catalog or price list, but they're meeting all the legal requirements required of vendors to do business with school districts, such as are they debarred from federally funded contracts? Are they indebted to the school district? Okay, so Have they convicted? there's something that, I guess maybe part of the registration process. It's not part of the registration process. It's part of the bid submittal packet. Okay. We have a difference in nomenclature there, that's all, uh, or definition of terms. So they're submitting a, what, a W-9 and? Our felony uh, conviction notification, form. our non-collusion statements, the conflict of interest requirements by the state. Right. And this will give the school district a list of vendors that campuses and departments can use on an as-needed basis because we don't know exactly what instructional materials a teacher is going to need in her classroom three months from now or what art supplies a teacher is, will need. How long is the bid good for? The bid is good for one year at a time with multiple renewal options. Well, this bid, I said that off the top of my head. I, I, and here, I guess here's a situation where I, I, I find problematic is that somebody finds something better, but they can't buy it. Somebody creates a new product. Somebody comes with something new. They um, have to use approved vendors. You're correct. That's state law. That's not a school district law. The school districts has to adhere to the state of Texas purchasing requirements. What I'm not finding is, I, you're telling me that state law. Yes, sir. That we have to use approved vendors whenever our aggregate quantity exceeds $50,000 in a year. I do business with a lot of different school districts. Sure. Yes, sir. And none of them operate like this. Well, I don't I'm know not, what you want I me to tell you, sir. I, I don't think they're can, operating illegally or in violation of state law. Some school districts are because they're small and they don't ever reach that $50,000 threshold. So they don't have to bid that. $50,000 is not a lot of money. In That's correct. Of a school district budget. It doesn't take a very big school district to exceed that on almost a, everything well, they do. A lot of school districts don't have procurement departments, sir. And the business manager is doing the best they can. Go ahead, Ms. Decal. Ma'am? Yeah. No, I'm so, so is it my understanding that if you aren't on this list tonight, that you cannot, you're not an approved vendor until this time next year? For this particular category, yes, ma'am. And so are you saying that, that no one can submit to be a new vendor during the, that one-year period of time? That is correct, but why? there are other, is that based on? the way why we were. Why can't, why can't we consider a new vendor at another time during the year? You mean to shorten my bid period from less than a year to perhaps six months, rebid it every six months? No, I mean, why can't, I, why can't we consider a new vendor that perhaps um, well, provides a better product at this time, or a better service? 
list that weren't on one. this list. Why can't we consider well, adding someone? Is there, there is a law, law that you have to have a bid issued with a closing date. It has to be advertised in the newspaper once a week for two weeks prior to the bid opening. We have to have a public bid opening. It is um, approximately a three-month process for us then to consolidate it from the start of the bid to the end of the bid when it opens. After the advertisement is timed in, we get it on the agenda for board approval. It is a two to three month process. And that's your saying for, for a particular purchase that's going to be more than $50,000. But for a vendor that isn't going to, that we're not going to spend that much money. It's not per it. vendor, ma'am. It is per category of item for like fine arts supplies, not Joe's fine arts. Where are those, cat I'm sorry, Sherry. Where, where are those categories? When you say category of products, is there a list? No, sir. They promulgate that we, is we create the list. Of, yes, sir. Okay. And so within the category we've generated, if we're going to spend more than $50,000 throughout the year within that category, however broadly we've defined it, then we need to go through this process. Yes, sir. We also belong to approximately 20 different purchasing cooperatives throughout the state. So if a vendor is on one of those cooperatives, we can use them. Another big resource for us is a cooperative called the Central Texas Purchasing Alliance. There's 102 school districts throughout the state that are on that, and we can piggyback each other's bids. So we'd use that extensively in this area with Temple, Belton, Austin, Round Rock, um, San Antonio ISD, Shirt Sablo, um, we all can piggyback. Each other. You could use that vendor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, if another school district happens to bid out fine arts in this case, and that vendor gets added on that bid, we can use them. We all work together. The purchasing directors in the state work very close together. But we have this clause in our bid that allows us to do that. Other questions from the board? And another thing, sir, off this list, if we're using federal funds, we are required to get three quotes. So that maybe that helps your concern. Is Because we cannot identify every single item that a school district will need. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't have that with me tonight, but I have an Excel spreadsheet in my office where I keep track of all unapproved purchases. <laughs> now, we bid that. <laughs> so. And if there is any large item need where we know we would bid that out individually. We 15,000, 50? 15 is when we get quotes internally. That's not the law, but that's just something we do because we're comfortable. Yes, sir. Local policy. Trotz, approximately how many categories do you have on that spreadsheet, would you guess? Ballpark. How many different categories of products are you tracking? I mean, that we spend less than 50000 on? Just total categories. In other words, like this category is theater, fine arts, supplies, equipment, repair services. That's one category. How many categories like that do you have sure. that you're tracking? I'm 40. I'm, that's a guess, sir. Is... 
maybe the answer to Mr. Dupuy's question, and this is, I don't know this, are there maybe districts that are defining those categories more <laughs> narrowly so that there's a lesser chance they exceed the $50,000 threshold? In other words, if you have a big category, you know, you, all the fine arts are included in this one category, then over the course of the year, we're clearly going to exceed 50. I mean, how like band, choir? I mean, are there folks maybe narrowing that down so that they're under the 50? So I'm just trying to figure out why he said he's experienced with other districts that aren't going through this. Asymmetry. School districts are using this, sir. Every single school district that I'm aware of uses this. The only local school district that I'm aware of that wasn't using this was Midway. And they have a new purchasing person, and now they are in the process of issuing the local retailer's bid right now. I only know that because she was my previous employee who left the school district, and she asked for my I'm not saying they bids. aren't, and don't, I understand they're following the overall process, but maybe within that process, they're more narrowly defining. And what school district's to. discretion. Right. And so there may be some that are defining those categories more narrowly so that they're more comfortable saying we're, this, this narrow category isn't going to exceed 50. Yes, sir, that's a possibility. If they're comfortable, when their auditors are comfortable with that philosophy. Fair enough. Who audits us? It's our financial advisor. I mean, our financial auditor. External audit. Uh, this board has a discretion to assign our internal auditor as necessary as an additional scope of review if this board decided. Other questions, comments from the board? Yeah, Ms. Sykes. Ms. Trotz. Uh, this category seems to be pretty broad in terms of areas that it covers. Am I? A lot of the vendors for band are also vendors for choir, are also vendors right. for theater right. art, so it's and I'm, a mesh. I'm isolating on the services provided by Waco vendors. Are we, in your opinion, well representative in this broad category by Waco vendors? I have a special bid that I wrote just for Waco vendors, and it's called our local retailers bid. Okay. And so it... it in addition it, to this bid? Oh, or? yes, sir. I have several bids, but I have... You know, maintenance, parts, and supplies. I've got fine arts, I have theater, I have career and technology. You want a new bid? I'll write one. I'm just um, specifically have, referencing this particular bid, though, because there's a lot of companies on here, and it looks like relatively few references to Waco or availability for Waco vendors. Mm -hmm. And I just. But if a vendor is a local retailer and they did not get the chance or missed out on the deadline for this opportunity, they can fall under the local retailer's bid and be more than willing to approve them on that bid. I want to give the local retailers every chance to get on our bids. And I did, a, remember that announcement we did last month and I had that, I offered a forum for local vendors to find out how to do business with school district. Any vendor is welcome to call me anytime, I'll walk them through the process. I really do try to encourage local participation. I want to follow up on that because I saw the notice that you were having, but did anybody come? No, ma'am, Mr. Dupuy. Well, so I'm wondering, so, what did you do to publish that? And I saw it three days before the event. We advertised it in the Sunday newspaper front page section, and the communication department pushed it out through their broadcast for me. Uh, Mary Center worked with me exclusively on that. So why, why do you think no one came? Whenever any people have questions, they call us and we walk them through it over the phone. Um, I think if a vendor was questioning how to do business, they would have already approached us. Um, also, we did this about two years ago, and so maybe it was too soon to do it again. We had a huge turnout two years ago. Watch me, how many local retailers are on your local retailer bid? Well, I mean, is it several hundred or 50 or if you were to estimate? I'd say it's closer to 50 than several hundred. On the but local retailer bid, the, the big bid for local retailers. I, I'm sorry, I don't have it with me. Um, we just closed it last Friday, and so we're going to be bringing that for your approval in November for the new bid, the one that will start then the day after the November board meeting. Mr. Dupuy. Uh, sharing one other question, I guess 
Okay, as long as you are an approved vendor on any of your bid categories, you can actually sell the district something in another bid category? It would have to be part of that bid category. I mean, it would, have to, it would have to make sense. You can't be approved for a special education bid and sell a maintenance part, unless it was a maintenance part to repair a piece of special ed equipment. I mean, it would have to make sense. I think I've seen where we've done some of that, but maybe I'm okay. All right, other questions from the board? All right, I'll entertain a motion. Yeah, we're on 9G, the uh, bid renewal for theater, fine arts supplies, equipment repairs, and other services. So move. I'm Mr. Manning. Second. Second. Uh, Mr. Dupuy will get the second. Any other questions, comments, discussion? Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, motion carries unanimously. Uh, we will move on to reports and discussion. Uh, item 10A is the report on the delinquent tax collection. Uh, Mr. Meyer, Mr. Boswick. I think there's a. Was the PowerPoint loaded or are we just going off your. Please. We can do either one. Do you have the. You want to look well, at. It doesn't matter to us. We've got the PowerPoint, I think. Okay. If you've got it in front of you, um, that, that we, we'd send it. Hmm? Well, Screen. <laughs> well, that's fine. <laughs> however, however, the board would like to do this. We're ready to go. I'm Robert Myers from the McCurry Law Firm. And I'm uh, Rick Bostwick from Beard Culgeon, Brophy Bostwick, and Dixon. And um, as as is our norm, this is our annual report um, on current, uh, on your delinquent tax collection. Uh, we are, uh, and it really, we take it very seriously. It goes without saying it's an honor to be able to serve the board and the district um, in this task. Uh, one of the things, and we, uh, that we want you to understand at the outset is that we take the task seriously. We understand that we are collecting taxes from yours and our neighbors and constituents uh, and members of the district. And that absolutely means that we treat them with the courtesy and respect uh, an honor that is due them. Uh, and it's not just a task to maximize the tax collection. Uh, we try to balance that. Robert's office goes to uh, significant lengths uh, to assist people uh, in that regard and make it uh, as seamless and as reasonable um, as they can. Um, Having said that, look at the, you are in the same good shape you were in last year. We'd like to take 100% credit for that. Uh, unfortunately, the economy deserves about 98% of the credit um, because as you can see, you collected over 98% uh, of your current taxes before you even turned them over. Uh, that says a lot about, number one, the economy, and number two, about the district and the people that live here. Um, let, if me, you, let me say, if I may. Sure. I was mentioning to, to Rick earlier that this year you're at 98.58% of your current tax collection percentage. Last year you're at 98.7%, year before that 98.59%. If you go back 10 or more years and look at, if you've got nothing else to do at night, I'll be glad to share this data with you. I've got spreadsheets full of it. But you go back several years, you'll find that you average about 97.5% of your current collection percentage. This past few years have uh, been very, very high percentage in the mid-98%. That's a full percent more than you've averaged over a number of years that I've worked for the district doing that. And we consider that you have a $77 million levy, 1%.
is, is nearly $800,000 in additional revenue that you're receiving timely. Now, you always get the money eventually. The key is, I work with uh, Ms. Davis, she usually wants the money ASAP. And so the sooner we get it in, the sooner I, I make Ms. Davis happy with our actions in getting those taxes collected. And so this chart shows that, you know, a, a, another year of successfully really outstanding collections for the district. Uh, the next chart is indicates some irony in the good news of the first chart, and that is you typically collect ultimately over 100% of your levy. And you can see for the last five years that's been true in every circumstance, somewhere 100 plus 40 something per, or 50 percent. Um, that's due to the penalties and interest that are collected as well as the, as the principal. Um, the interesting thing is, uh, in you have collected so much currently that your ultimate collection is correspondingly slightly down because you get less penalty and interest, but you get the principal sooner. Um, it's, it's just an irony of the process. You can't have it, you can't have it both ways. <laughs> right. Um, but nevertheless, the district is exceeding 100% of its levy when you add in the delinquent penalties and, and, and uh, interest that are charged on, on delinquent taxes. So to some extent, it's a good investment. Um, on the next chart, all this really does is show illustratively that the longer period of time we have to work the delinquent accounts, uh, the closer you get ultimately to 100% of the principal levy being collected. And what you start out with is actually a very high current collection of 98.73 when you turn it over. Uh, you'll get another percent out of that, uh, which is obviously a significant amount of money, as Robert said, uh, over a period of four to five years. And this sort of corresponds into the next chart, which is the, I think, I'm correct, yeah, these pies reflect the actual taxes that you turn over to us each July. Each July you turn over the unpaid taxes from the prior year. The top pie on the top of the chart shows the taxes you turned over to us just three months ago. Those are the 2017 taxes you turned over to us in July of this year. At that time, you turned over to us $1.6 million outstanding from your 2017 levy, and we've collected over $650,000 of that, or nearly 40% of that in just three months since you turned it over to us in 90 days. In the pie chart on the, on, the, on the left side is the 16 taxes you turned over to us 15 months ago. We've, we've collected over 73% of the taxes in that 15-month period of time. In the, the chart on the far right, the 15 taxes, those are taxes you turned over to us in July of 2016. We collected over nearly 82%. And, and those um, colored wedges, represents the difference on the chart you're looking at between the top of, the, of that bar and 100%. That's the outstanding taxes due to the district for those particular years. And as you can see, we have worked on those taxes, we've reviewed those taxes, we've gone through the roll, contacted the taxpayers, and have taken action to collect the taxes. And the rest of our chart, of our report, lists the various activities that we undertake to collect those taxes including filing lawsuits, sending out notices right there. We sent out nearly 10,000 notices to your taxpayers. And, and mostly what we're doing is we go through the delinquent roll on a case by case, item by item, tax by tax account. And we, we make some activity, we, we note what's going on in that tax, and we make an effort to collect that tax, whether it's a phone call, a letter, we do file lawsuits. We filed over 200 lawsuits in the past year. But we're making sure that there's nothing that goes unnoticed that's outstanding to the district and yet at the same time making efforts to collect those taxes by contacting your taxpayers, your businesses, small businesses, your taxpayers, your homeowners which which make a, a large section of your tax roll and work with them if not able to make their tax payments directly and quickly but any way they can possibly do that because we realize and Rick has pointed this out before that these taxpayers are members of our community maybe parents of your children and it's important to us, we think, that we treat them with respect, 
that we can at the same time make sure the district's needs are met by having that tax revenue collected as promptly as we can. And so we do take action when need be, and, but that's always as a last resort. And even at that, most of those result in payment uh, without any further action on that basis. And so I think the threefold e efforts is the, the effort to collect your taxes and make sure the revenue is there, reaching out to your taxpayers to assure that they have every opportunity to make their payments as they can. And really, the other thing is that we provide full property tax services for the district in terms of collection of taxes, and property value studies, and all these things we work with Ms. Davis and, and her staff to assure that anything that deals with property taxes, the district has a question about or issue, we're going to take care of it for you. And the other thing is, you mentioned local. Uh, Rick and I are, are, well, Rick has been here much longer than I in terms hey, of his I re life. I resent that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but we've, you know, our, our children attended Waco ISD schools. My two boys graduated from Waco ISD. And uh, we live in the community. We're part of the community. The staff in my office are members and, and, and live in the community, have children in the community. And uh, we're, we're homegrown to some yeah. extent. Although Rick may not be as long homegrown as I am. Put it that <laughs> He's catching up. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, Dr. Nelson. I went to, thank you, Mr. President. I went to a conference the other day, and they had a session on what they called pilot monies, payment in lieu of taxes. They were talking about housing authorities in a school district that make some kind of payment in lieu of paying their share of taxes. There are, in some instances, federally, uh, from what I understand, federally financed um, housing programs that the federal law requires the housing uh, association or housing organization, since it's exempt from local taxes, to make a payment in lieu. And, you know, over the years there have been, but it's never my recollection, it's, it's happened to the district on, a, on several instances where we've gotten the money, but it's not anything that we can impose upon them or the district can impose upon them. It's done by their contract or, the, or their obligation through the federal monies they're receiving to make some sort of, of, of payment to the school district. And the district in the past, I don't know if Ms. Davis remembers that, has, has received some of those funds, but, but not all that much that I recollect coming in from pilots. We'll talk okay. and so, and so, okay. So, I just want to make sure we're getting that money. Is there? Oh, and that's because we're not asking for it, or? I think it's, it's more the federal obligation. Okay, no problem. We can, we can look into that. No trouble, no trouble. But um, in the past, when we received those funds, when I checked the federal statutes and things, it was money that they, and how they calculated it, it was, it, it was not based on value or anything like that. It was just some sort of contributory payment. Right. But we can, we can check on that, uh, Dr. Nelson, make sure there's nothing going amiss or either. Other questions from the board? Gentlemen, as always, thank you. Appreciate the great report. Appreciate we your thank efforts. You. Appreciate it. Thank you, very thank much. you for your partnership. All right, we'll move on uh, to our next item, which is Lone Star Governance District Literacy Plan. Dr. Nelson. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, under our Lone Star Governance um, relationship, we wanted to uh, continue the conversation that we began uh, actually last month. Uh, we had it last week as well. We're using a document that looks like this for purposes for the board's recollection. It's at your dice, dais, looks like this. And uh, in the interest of time, what we really wanted um, to do is two things tonight. Number one, we wanted to provide you an update of this document based on the conversation that we had last week. And if it's okay with this board, we would like for you to take this, review it, make sure it has the changes that we discussed, and we will put this on consent for next month. It's not for action, it is not on our agenda for action tonight. So we can't take action on it even if we wanted to. But we will, in, an, in an abundance of transparency, I think the board should have a chance to look at it. It is 
uh, summary of everything we discussed last week. Uh, Mr. President, before I get into literacy, did you want to talk about your conversation with the Texas Education Agency? Thank you, Dr. Nelson. Uh, in response to some of the questions that were raised last week, I did have an opportunity to talk with Deputy Commissioner Craybill, uh, specifically on the question of what do you do with a goal once you have already achieved it. And he said the latest version of the Lone Star Governance Manual actually addresses that situation and that we are to uh, congratulate and recognize staff for their efforts in helping us meet our goal ahead of time and that it is absolutely appropriate at that point to adopt a new third goal and go ahead and drop uh, that career and technology goal that we've already achieved. And so that's, I believe, is what Dr. McClanahan has put into this packet. Um, and as we were talking before the meeting, that would actually be Donna McKethan who would be responsible for that. And uh, as our National Career and Technology Educator of the Year, she just hadn't already gotten enough recognition. Uh, but Donna, in all sincerity, thank you. And we'll, uh, we do want to celebrate your success in that area. Also, we talked about altering the goal progress measure once we've determined that the one we were utilizing maybe didn't provide us with accurate information. And he said that is absolutely part of the process and we're at a stage where we need to be doing that. And if we've got a more accurate tool to help us monitor our success towards our goal, it would be appropriate to make that change. So I think Dr. McClanahan's incorporated uh, that in the report as well. Uh, and Dr. Uh, Nelson, I will say, uh, Deputy Commissioner Craig Bill was very complimentary of your staff and of the board and our ability to do the Lone Star Governance and, and to continue to do it with integrity. I believe he wants you to present to other school districts as a model. Yeah, Ms. McKethan has now roped you and I into having to present on what you do when you achieve one of your goals and how you have to replace it. Mr. Uh, Crable, you said Ms. McKethan. Well, it's Ms. McKethan who helped us get the goal. Okay. We're one of the first districts to do that. He wants you and I to present at the conference call among superintendents and board presidents All right. next quarter. So. So, <laughs> thank you. So that brings us to the next presentation. Um, you have, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Ms. McCutcheon, this is an attachment. It's a 156 page document that is a labor of love and effort by our Office of Elementary and Secondary Education. Uh, they have worked on this for over a year. We've actually presented a preview of this last spring. And before we take this on tour, beginning Monday night at a town hall meeting at seven o'clock, Waco High School PAC is where we'll begin our um, changing the narrative about literacy. And I would, I would ask uh, tonight to just introduce it to this board. It's gonna take some time, but I would respectfully ask to prepare for our team building conversations in future board meetings that you read every page of this and we we invite you to ask us questions regarding sections this literacy plan is for every three-year-old and above in the waco independent school district including um, adults parents and families uh, adults that are illiterate we really have a plan to address literacy from three years old through our adults. And it's all in this plan and it's, it's gonna require some changes in our classrooms. It's gonna require some changes to our master schedule, our training regimen. It's going to require um, a commitment to literacy. And I'm very proud of the work and um, that has been coordinated by Dr. Scott McClanahan and Mrs. Grace Benson. Uh, it has gone through our teachers, our principals, central office leaders, early childhood to career and technical education to athletics. Everyone is committing to this new uh, focus on literacy development. We believe it'll impact every student outcome that we're responsible for. And I would turn your attention to page four, really pages three and four, that have a comprehensive overview of the timeline that's been established and a framework of a document we call the bow tie. But to make a long story short, um, this is the, the map, the, the playbook 
uh, that we're asking all of our campuses to become familiar with. We started this introduction, we prepared this document in May and June through a collaborative proce process coordinated through Transformation Waco and we have expanded it to every campus in the district. And we're looking forward to um, really having the board support us as we roll out a philosophy and timeline of literacy development uh, that is unprecedented. I wanna thank again everyone who's been a, a part of it. And I wanna highlight <clears throat> for purposes of the public that this plan addresses all learners from those requiring school readiness to those needing adult literacy. We also want to be clear that this literacy plan, 156 pages, uh, increases the amount of time that will be spent on literacy in grades K through five through a research-based instructional practices. Uh, this plan addresses all aspects of literacy, including reading, writing, speaking, listening and thinking. Uh, this plan is literacy guidance for all special programs, including special education, gifted and talented education, career and technical education, and every special program that we have. This plan phases in the various grade levels over a two-year period to allow schools time to provide training and to adapt to the classroom procedures we will be mandating as part of our literacy initiative. Um, as this district knows, in my 18 uh, wonderful months in this community, uh, literacy has been one of our quote unquote big rocks that we talk about, including early childhood education, commitment to specialized programs, uh, coordinating wraparound services, and the other big rocks that we've mentioned, uh, including the literacy plan. And so um, I think in the interest of time, we should introduce it tonight. We feel like we've done that. It's such a, uh, an extensive document. You know, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you know, it has things about uh, the STAR mentoring reading program as part of our literacy plan. That's coordinated by Mrs. Quarterweg and the STARS uh, mentor team at Antioch Community Church. That's part of our plan. As I think about some of the work that this district has done in gifted and talented education, that's detailed in this plan. I don't have the page, but Dr. McClanahan can give it to you before you leave. Um, bilingual education, uh, the list goes on and on. So uh, it's a lot of work and I just wanna clearly communicate that our team is working well together and we are focused on doing what we said we would do and this is the beginning of regular presentations on literacy to help the board lead the district um, in a fine fashion. Any comments or questions from the board at this time? Thank you, Dr. Nelson. Um, Dr. McClanahan, Ms. Benson, your entire career and instruction team, I just want to congratulate you on the process of convening these experts and stakeholders over the last 12 months on really developing a very uh, specific plan. I think back to the TRE and the investment that taxpayers made three years ago with uh, instructional aids and additional teachers, and this really leverages that investment with additional materials and structures and, and processes that I think will really allow us to go to the next level. So th thank you for doing that. Thank you, thank you. President Atkins. Other questions, comments? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Sykes. Yes, I want to echo and reiterate our president's comments, but also we, you know, last week we had uh, a discussion about our, our goal one, literacy issues, reading on grade level, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make sure that I'm understanding this is a tremendous program, and yes, I'm going to take a close look at it in terms of uh, the material it presents and the timelines and everything else, but is this the, the pathway then to get goal one progress measures all yes, the way sir. through? Because yes, we left aggressive goals in there. Yes, sir. And we appreciate you all, you know, considering that and attending to that. Mm -hmm. But this looks like an excellent framework to guide us to attain those aggressive goals in our progress measures. Yes, sir. Is our that, students can do it. Okay. And this is this is how we're we're gonna we're gonna continue 
to grow the knowledge base of our teachers in the instruction of literacy. We have incredible teachers and we've provided them with additional resources and the professional development has already started and this is how we are gonna continue to grow. But in our my teachers. opinion, you put a, together a very critical framework, you know, to follow that pathway. Yeah. And, uh, well, if you, that. if you understand, if I may, Mr. Sykes, if you understand our data, you know, this board has set as a goal third grade reading reading, uh, reading on grade level by third grade, and that's outstanding. But when you really start to dissect the plan to address that, it really starts with our three-year-olds. And how many kindergartner, how many kids enter kindergarten ready for kindergarten? So that's a whole nother metric that we're able to measure, we're able to monitor, and quite frankly, make sure we're improving. So uh, we have our director of early childhood here. And as we talk about what we want for third grade kids, that starts with our three-year-olds. And uh, we certainly, our plan is very diagnostic and prescriptive down to the kid to make sure we accomplish our kindergarten goals, just to have a chance to accomplish our third grade goals. And, and one of the things that we did to reinforce that is with bringing in Achieve 3000 mm -hmm. uh, this year mm -hmm. when Ms. Davis was working on the contract with them, uh, Achieve 3000 actually gave us license for Achieve 3000 for every four-year-old in Waco mm -hmm. to be able to access whether or not they're in our school district. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, bringing literacy to the community is really where it starts. Mm -hmm. And we're really, you know, happy that we're able to do that. Um, on the flip side of that, Dr. Nelson mentioned the adult literacy part. Mm -hmm. um, next mm -hmm. month, you'll be getting an MOU from MCC because Ms. McKethan is actually mm -hmm. working with MCC and Guama, and they are doing a hybrid program where they are offering GED classes with adult literacy through MCC on alternating nights that they are doing masonry mm -hmm. classes. So they are teaching literacy and masonry at the same time so that those people are increasing their literacy abilities but also learning a job skill that they can then go out and use. And, we, and we're continuing to, to capitalize on the knowledge of our primary teachers because the research shows that if students in first grade have systematic and explicit phonics instruction, they are more likely to read at grade level by the time they're in third grade. And this plan lays out a very specific schedule with resources and training where our teachers can learn those specific skills. And thanks to the TRE, we have literacy aids that have been incredible assets in the classroom. Thank you, Mr. Sykes. Other questions, comments from the board? Ms. Cordway? Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Um, the uh, li literacy classes, GED, and, and the uh, masonry classes, we have opened that up to, a, uh, to adults. I know we had discussed that one time, but uh, when, when, did we, uh, when did we do that? MCC approached, they wanted another uh, location to offer GED classes, mm -hmm. and so they asked if they could use the facility at Guam. Okay, so they just using our facility more so than? Yes, sir, and then, so they're using the facility, and so we were talking about well, uh, uh, an occupation that could be an easily trained, uh, quickly trained, so that the, the students not only get in their GED, but they could also get a higher earning wage. So I've been working with Brazos Masonry. We're in the process now of looking for a teacher to teach the masonry classes. And so uh, they, we've got the MOU with MCC. Um, they'll pay for the teacher, the masonry teacher. And then we'll have GED classes on, I think they decide on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then Thursdays will also be masonry classes. So if they want to learn a trade on one night a week, they can do that as well. But, I mean, are, are there any other costs coming out? out There's no the other cost. There is no. Well, we've asked them to pay for everything. And you'll have the MOU. They'll pay for the, the only thing we're doing is letting them use the building. They'll actually provide the security guard. I uh, talked to um, Chief Williams, and he gave me a price on what it would cost to have, you know, our officers will be paid through by MCC. And then they'll pay for the instructor. They'll provide the GED instructor. We'll just have the building open for them. Well, thank, I mean, I know you and I have discussed this yes, one sir, time. Yes, That's why I was kind of surprised. Well, it's it's kind of one of those things that you work on, you work on, all of a sudden it all comes together in one nice ball really quickly. So the MOU is, I just got to send forward, and 
Um, like I said, I'm looking for a teacher to teach okay. masonry right now. Well, like I said, we had discussed yes, that sir. because some other people had, had questioned whether we were doing anything in the community, and I think this is a great outreach in I the think community. it's exciting because, you know, masonry is not, it's a skill that takes practice right. more than it takes, um, you know, just practice, repetitive practice. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right, Ms. Cordaway. Uh, I just wanted to make a comment. I think um, just as I kind of look through some of the literacy plan and just kind of hear specifically what um, Ms. McKethan is doing, I just think, wow, this is exciting times. Really, really exciting times in Waco ISD. I, you know, I think we have, through the community, been able to provide resources for the kids in terms of dual credit and just this lit the, the ability to provide teachers and classrooms for this literacy program. And, uh, and so I think the community really stepped up and it's able, they're able, we're able to provide students with services. But then I hear about this program and I thought, wow, we've, we're also taking care of the needs at times of the family, at least giving them opportunity. And I thought that is incredible. In, in my opinion, and um, you know, I, I've been walking in and throughout some of the elementary campuses, and you know, my daughter's only gonna be one pretty soon, but I thought, I'm gonna have a tough choice at which elementary school to put her in, because these campuses are stellar. I mean, we've got a number of stellar elementary campuses in and throughout this district, and I, I am uh, so, um, thankful and pleasantly surprised at that like just really really stellar campuses and so I just really wanted to thank you for your work on this you have laid out a vision to for our teachers for administrators and really for our district to really kind of move to move the needle in third grade reading and that needle in third grade reading will set us up for success not only in middle school but success in high school and hopefully beyond so I'm just I, I just, I think it's inspiring. I think it is really exciting. And um, I'm excited to be a part. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cordwick. Other comments? Uh, I know we've just sort of scratched the surface on some of the highlights tonight. I, I do look forward to future reports and we can do kind of a deeper dive into some of these components because it's, it's really, a, I agree with her, it's very exciting. So thank you, folks. Dr. Nelson, you have anything else? Well, not on this, no, sir. Uh, then we will move on to, I believe, announcements. announcements. Uh, and I, I know we have some Baylor students sitting over to the right, so I will let them know your Bears have now scored, so you've got seven points on the board. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, West Virginia has 51 points on the board, but it's uh, in the third Lugly. quarter, so it's, you're, 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 you're not missing anything by being here tonight. Dr. Nelson, what a wonderful option for you to be here. <laughs> I do want to say one thing before we turn it over to Mr. DeBeer. First of all, I wanted to be the first. We'll bring this group in front of this board, but it should be noted that the University High School Trojans band, marching band, uh, scored a one in the UIL marching contest. We're so, so very proud of Dr. Edison and Mr. Haddon, the band director, Dr. Edison, the principal, and all of the great kids and parents who supported uh, band season. Uh, Waco High did well as also, We're very proud of them as well, uh, but uh, university was able to get the highest score possible, and so I wanted to recognize them. Also, um, on, I'm from a family, not to get into my personal life, but uh, my mother had two boys, and on November 5th, 1977, she had her second uh, boy. And little did I know that also on November 5th was the day that the chief financial officer for Waco ISD celebrates her birthday. So I wanted to wish her a happy birthday as well. And last but certainly not least, on November 2nd, the Honorable, I'm assuming using the restroom right now, Mr. Norman Manning will celebrate a birthday. So I wanted to wish Mr. Manning a happy birthday as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's, he's reading the literacy plan. I was going to say to Cheryl, you can run, but you can't hide. But Norman hid. Yeah. <laughs>
She would have if she'd have known I was going to do it. Taking notes for him. What yeah. Congratulating for his birthday, birthday November second. Oh. Yes, yes. And I, I'm sure he's reading literacy. Yeah. All, right. All right, Mr. De Beer. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Dr. Nelson. We're really excited to go back to the community. This is something that we did three times over the past year, and we're looking forward to shifting the conversation from uh, not just what are the immediate steps we need to take and how the community can be a part of those, but to now changing the narrative to look at the success that we've had over the past year and where we go from there. Our first community meeting is going to be next Monday at 6 p.m. in the Performing Arts Center at Waco High School. The following Monday on November 5th, we'll be at the City of Waco Multipurpose Center, also at 6 p.m. And then on November 12th at 6 p.m., we'll be at Bells Hill Elementary, and that third uh, community meeting is going to be conducted in Spanish. We really want to invite the community to come, hear about the dramatic transformation that's taking place in Waco ISD, uh, and give us feedback share their ideas on where we go from here. I'd also like to highlight two events that our friends at the Greater Waco Chamber of Commerce have coming up in the next couple of weeks. First, on uh, October 31st, they're hosting a regional school finance convening. If you're looking at the school finance system in Texas, that seems an appropriately spooky topic for Halloween. And then the following week on November 7th, they'll be hosting the State of Public Education Luncheon. It will feature a panel of local superintendents, including our very own Dr. Mark. Marcus Nelson, and uh, remarks from the State Commissioner of Education, Mike Morath. More information about both of those great education-related events is on the Chamber's website at wacochamber.com. Um, and then finally, just want to make sure that this board knows the next meeting uh, for the Board of Transformation Waco is on November 27th as our friends continue their work in partnership with us to operate the five schools in our transformation zone. Thank you. One other quick announcement, if I may. Um, Mr. Sykes and I this week had an opportunity to attend uh, the regularly scheduled Rotary Rotarian Luncheon. And I just wanted to thank Dr. Jerry Mays for his outstanding presentation from the Region 12 Service Center, uh, where you can open records request his presentation. Uh, he was, he had a slide just about Waco ISD and how we've partnered with the Regional Service Center and how they've been so helpful in our transformation efforts. And I know I speak for Mr. Sykes. We were both proud to be in the audience and listen to the Service Center highlight how effective our relationship has been as we continue to work together. So I want to thank Dr. Mays for that. Thank you, Mr. Dr. President. Uh, any other uh, announcements from the dais? Then. Uh, Yes, Mr. Manning. Excuse me, I heard that someone recognized my birthday. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> we'll do it again. I, I, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't recognize my birthday. It's my, it's my anniversary, and you won't know how many years, so I'll let you know later. 30, 39, 39, hold it. So, so you came back out just to recognize your own birthday. So you and tell us now. Uh, uh, Mr. Dupree gave me the information he passed it on to me. Uh, took, took good notes. With uh, any other announcements from the dais, then at 8.37, we'll stand adjourned.